What's up guys, welcome back to our channel. You guys see us driving today? Guess where we are, we're in South Florida. We're gonna be checking out Terrell's tank. We met this guy on Instagram, he invited us over, he's on Fort St. Lucie. Then we're gonna check, go check out my tattoo artist and loose tattoo artist, his name is Tyler Nolan. You guys seen him before in our videos. And then we're gonna go check out Julian Sprung. So we're in for a ride today, so stay tuned. We're gonna go check this out, let's go. Also, don't forget, we're always looking for content. So if you think your tank is worthy, it's gotta be a beautiful tank though. It's gotta be clean, it's gotta be well grown. None of that wild colonies everywhere. No, seriously, if you think your tank is worth it, we want it. So please send us an email, send us a DM. We'll be glad to come and film it. So to my surprise, guys, I thought we were coming to see one tank. And you got two massive display tanks here in your living room and you show, you give me a quick peek in your garage. Yep. And you have three other tanks, if I'm correct? Correct. So we're in for a ride. He's got five tanks, guys, believe it or not. So anyhow, we find your tank in Instagram. Is that how it happened? Correct, yeah. And we contact you, so man, this guy's got a beautiful tank. Let's see what's up. And so dimensions of the tank, is an uh, eight footer? Uh, yep, eight foot, so 96 by 24 by 30. 96 by 24 by 30. Yep. So let me guess that this tank is 200, it's a 265. Uh, yeah, 265, 300 roughly. Yeah, just like the yep. old Marine Land. Yep, yep. Okay, cool. And who made the tank? Uh, it's actually custom made. Custom made? So custom made Starfire Glass. I actually got it secondhand from a guy that never set it up. How long has this tank been running? Uh, a year now with livestock. A year with livestock? Yep. And you started everything from single frags or some of the colonies were a little bigger? Some were, some were a little bit, uh, they, they were grown out of my other tank before, my 220 before I ended up having to replace it. So I moved them all over. I had some in my other system as well. So, but yeah, they all started from frags. And you said this was been running for a over? Year. About a year, about year, a year? With, year with livestock, maybe about a year and three okay. months with cycling. And I gotta ask, what made you choose to go bare bottom? Uh, it's a lot easier to keep clean. Uh, just, it's, it's easier to manage. You know, I ended up, uh, when I had my other tank, I had sand on the bottom and it was just a, it was just a big toilet bulb down there. And so I'm, I'm lazy, I don't get in and clean the, clean the sand like I should, so I figured. Yeah, I'm a big believer of bare bottom. Yep, and keep it simple, man. So one, one, one thing worth asking, you never uh, thought of putting a piece of starboard in the bottom? You just wanted glass? Yeah, you just went straight glass on you the bottom. You never get stressed that something could fall and... I've had, I've had, when my other tank was up, I've had rocks fall on the bottom. They're pretty and I'm strong. Not, yeah, and I'm not really putting too many, you know, straight hard, you know, points on the glass where it's going to crack it. So I kind of evenly distribute the rock weight out, so... It, I see. Yep. I love your aquascape. What kind of rocks do you use? Uh, this was just all live rock that I've collected from my previous systems and uh, some pieces I ended up pulling out, drying out, and then putting myself together. So this is all, this is all done myself. So how are you strapping them together? Um, I did the, uh, the purple reef putty and then glue also. So between that, if the reef putty doesn't set in there correctly, I'll, take it, I'll pull it back off and use the, the shape of it, put some glue back on and shove it back on and let it set. And usually it ends up setting pretty hard. Every once in a while I'll have a, you know, like a rock piece fall off where it's a nice long branch, but you know, I can easily put it back up again. I see, well, okay, that's yeah. cool. And how often you clean the floor? Um, I really don't too much. I just did the other day just because I had some algae growing on the bottom, but it was, it was covered in uh, coralline algae right before. So okay. it's kind of in the middle of just letting it, letting it stay or just cleaning it off, but. And I noticed this tank is I will say 90% SPS, strictly aquaporous, yep. and a few soantids on the bottom. Yep, yep. A Monty here and there. If I'm correct, I see a little turbinary area over there. Yep. So your love is for SPS. That's your favorite Absolutely, coral? Absolutely, man. I'm a stickhead all the way. So how you get into the hobby? How long you been in the hobby? Uh, five years now I've been in the hobby. So actually a buddy of mine got me into it and then introduced me to another uh, friend of his which owns the, the, the fish store around here and then uh, the, the, it's uh, Fantastics of Jensen Beach and uh, Fantastic Aquariums. And so just got into it over there and just been kind of rolling since. They, ha they helped me out a whole lot. And the rest is history. The rest is history. Can we talk about some of your fish in here? Yeah, uh, you absolutely. got my favorite, a Copperman butterfly. Yes, yes. I see a blonde nace over there. Yep. You got a pair of maroon lining clones, mm -hmm. is that what they are? Yep. I see a little six line wrasse in there. Um, magnificent fox face, powder blue. What else do we have? A white tail bristle tooth. Some damsels um, in there. Regal tang. Couple damsels. What's over there? Antheas? Is that yep. what that is? Yep, Antheas. Uh, just the uh, liar tails. And then I have a, uh, a flame hawk floating around in here somewhere. Okay, and can we talk a little bit about, before we dive into your lighting and your filtration and flow, mm -hmm. can we talk a little bit about your maintenance on this tank? Uh, what, what kind of water changes you do? What kind of chemicals you use? Okay. Um, I do minimal water changes, only kind of when necessary. I, okay. I basically do everything else through dosing, you know, re kind of replenishing my, my you know, uh, my 
you know, minerals via, you know, CKM okay. one and two. Your and, trace uh, elements and yeah, stuff. Yeah, trace like that. elements, yep. So, but yeah. Other so than that, you, you, you try not to do water changes, but you do them every so often? Every so often. If I see the tank kind of, you know, looking a little bit eh, if I see uh, too much detritus building up on the bottom, I'll scrape it out and then basically suck it all out, do a water change in the process and keep rolling. So three water changes a year, four water changes Maybe, a year, yeah. something like that? Something like that, roughly. Okay. And when you do, what kind of salt water do you use? Uh, the Reef Pro RPM mix. Okay, yep. and do you make your own water? Yep. What about your nitrous and phosphates? So I try to keep my phosphates at about a little bit under 0.1 here, and okay. then my nitrates are a little bit high right now. They're at about 50. I'm trying to bring them down a little bit. Okay. But uh, yeah, usually if I kind of keep the it in The coral seem to be happy. Yep. What do you feed? Uh, rods, fruit, and P uh, PE mice shrimp, and okay. then do some, um, some refroids here and there. So you target feed it once in a while? Yeah, so actually I'll just kind of broadcast feed with, uh, with everything more or less and just kind of let all the fish kind of get it, and, you know, let it settle in the system where it settles. How often do you feed? Uh, about three times a day, three, four times a day. Three, four times a day? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So can we talk about your lighting real yeah, quick? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm running five Radions. I'm what are these, Gen 4s? Yep, Gen 4s. Okay. I'm running T5s and then I'm running Reef Brights on the outside. How old school? Yep. Old school. Some people still do. That's nice to see. Yeah, I like I like what the uh, the T5s get. It kind of rounds out that spectrum. I'm sure yes. you know. I know the Radions can grow them by themselves, but you know I like the the full yeah, spectrum. Yeah, they, they get just, you get them the best of all all of them. Absolutely. The, little, little, the best. Absolutely. And for flow, I see you have uh, what are those two Jabals? Yep. So actually four Jabals. So the four Jabals. Yep. The the cross flows and then the uh, the Rex. There's plenty, right? No, there's plenty in there. Okay, and. Filtration, I love how you got a metal stand and it's all nice and open. I love yeah. how clean you keep everything. You're De pretty meticulous with all this Absolutely, stuff. Absolutely, I'm definitely. So we've been working with uh, the guy from Lunar Reef for a long time. Mm -hmm. He does amazing work. Absolutely. How are you ended up going this route? I um, actually got a friend that recommended me through him. So I ended up, you know, he kind of hooked me up. I uh, got all made it myself, got the custom design out and they, have them, they had it built in for me. Can you tell me a little bit, so uh, this is your auto top off right here, I yep, want to say? Yep, I got my auto top off. So basically, originally I had it built to run an external skimmer over here, okay. and that external skimmer is in the other system now. Okay, so this just, is what, a Regal 250? Yeah, 200, or two, what, two, yeah, 200. Okay, Regal so, 200. Yep. And, and see, so you got some extra rocks in the sun just yep. for extra filtration. Throw all the rocks that I can in there. I do have uh, tumbling uh, dragon's breath in that, in that chamber right there, and then run filter socks normal. How about for your calcium and alkalinity? I don't know if I missed that part. Um, not yet. So actually, I run about between eight and eight point five for your uh, for your alkalinity, alkalinity. Yeah. and then I you know I let the uh, let the calcium sit at about four hundred to four fifty. And what do you use to maintain it? Um, I use so I do Kalkwasser, and okay. then I do uh, Seachem uh, Refusion One and Two. Okay. So and how do you dose the One and Two? Uh, all off of the dose. Okay, so, so you got a Neptune controller. Yep. So I got one hooked up to the caulk washer, sending it over, and then basically what the caulk washer doesn't, you know, keep up on, I can have the, the, the refusion, you know, kick in and pick up the rest. Covered it all? Covered it all? Yes, sir. All right, let's go see the 400. Awesome. Don't forget, guys, throughout this video, we're going to hide an egg of Casper, not the real Casper, because I don't think they have a Casper here, but we're going to hide it somewhere. You got to watch the video. If you find the first one to send us a DM, we're gonna send you a box of clothes if you are within the 48 states. If you happen to be outside of the 48 states, we'll send you a t-shirt and a couple stickers. Hi, kissy boy. Mm -hmm. I love doggies. They're too cute. Look at this thing. Look at this little fat truck. Uh, it's a peninsula. Yep. Uh, what's the dimensions? Uh, so this is an 84 by 36 by 30. Uh, I picked it up secondhand from somebody and they had it custom made. I don't know the builder of it too and I could, I could find out pretty easily. Beautiful. But, yeah, man. And how long has this one been running? Ten months now. Ten months? Yep. So they're both fairly new? Yep. Yeah, I had so, a lot of upgrades and everything. So what was through. here before in this living room? It was a 220 gallon. It uh, was here before in this spot, and this was the same sump. And before that, this was the original tank that I started with. Which was a 180? Is that uh, what 125. A 125? Yep. Wow, you come a long way. I have, I have. So you're a madman. You haven't stopped. <laughs> Five years ago you started, and you're losing your no, mind now. Absolutely. I love how much you feel it you got on top. These Gonium Pores are the showstoppers. I mean, how oh, long have you had them? They're gorgeous. I actually picked a cup. I picked this one up from another guy, and I'm, he may have had it for about three years before that, so okay. I've had it for about two years. It is gorgeous. I love how you got the red one, the pink one, and then you got the, the green with the purple stem, yep, pink yep. stem. It is gorgeous. Oh, yeah. 
And I see you went bare bottom with this tank as well. I did indeed. You didn't even attempt to try to like, I did. try a little bit of both worlds? I did, I tried, oh, did. Uh, I did, uh, I started it with the bare bottom and then I actually, I moved a bunch of livestock into it because I was low on room and I threw some sand in and actually sent it into another cycle. So okay. ended up, I had, originally I was gonna have it as a mixed reef and ended up killing a bunch of my SPS. And so I kind of reevaluated brought it back down and started it as an LPS tank and just kind of figured if I'm gonna keep some nice stuff, I'm gonna give it the best best quality. Uh, I know these guys are nuts. Hey, <laughs> hey, they're going crazy. Oh, they Sorry. are. It's they a don't care. Oh, what here. are you doing? That's not nice. <laughs> He's wild. There he is. Yeah, but I figured so, I'll give it the best tank, the best possible parameters and just yeah. everything rather than trying to fight uphill battle of trying to, you know, balance an SPS and LPS. Yeah, I always tell people, it's always easy to introduce the nutrients and try to remove them. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's easy to use. It's, it's, I prefer bare bottom. A lot We've been just dabbling into bare bottom, sand, uh, crushed media in the bottom, different methods, you know? Torches, why so many torches? You oh, know, like hammers, I you know, like frogs torches. Actually, I actually, I got a lot of hammers on the other side okay, too. Okay, I got I, you. But um, I, yeah, I love my torches. And so uh, I figure, again, if I'm gonna, I'm gonna start collecting them if I got the ability to in the space. And that Duncan over there that you got on the left, yep. that thing is huge. How it long is. have you had it? Four years now. About four four years? years, yeah. I got you. I got another big one down there too in the center. I got you. Where at? I see Tuck it. Tuck behind that. Uh. <laughs> you got a tank. It's not a refugium. <laughs> it's like a tank within the fish tank, guys. You guys have to see this. So, so this was your old display tank, your old 125. Correct. Then you upgraded <laughs> to a two, 220. 220. And this was the sump of the 220. Correct. And now this is the sump for the 400. Yep. And then you put a little refugium and slash second tank yep. which is pretty cool you got a pair of clowns a bunch of leathers There's a method you do have some madness. sand there I do I do I do so for flow i see you using maspec jerry yep and only two of them correct so one thing is pretty cool i see you got them towards the top what i like about these power heads you can put them towards the top and they don't slurp yep yep which is a big plus when you put an mp40 or any other type of power head that's too strong and you put them near the surface, right. the first thing they try to do is try to grab air, and then you get a yep. bunch of bubbles in the tank and you get the nasty sound like Yep. I, I hate it with passion. So <laughs> that's one of the big pluses of having the mass pick gyro in your tank. You can put them all the way to the top and you can, you can actually disrupt the surface so you can get a little more of a shimmer, you know? Yep. All right, and how about fish here? I see purple tang yep, on I'm, shoulder. I'm still working on kind of my, my fish list and I'm doing it slowly over time. And I think I might have to rehome a couple from that tank and move them here and then add a couple smaller ones. Gotcha. But yep, just got these guys in here. Got my copper band and he doesn't pick any of my LPS, which is a blessing. Um, I love copper bands. Uh, they're, they're the best they're, to keep that fish away. Um, I got my orange shoulder, my purple. I got a big old six line in there. And he's then, huge. Yeah, he's big. And then I got three big chromis that are my Brady's last survivors. It's an understatement, guys. It's an understatement. <laughs> what about four lights on this tank? Um, I got four radions up here as well Gen as four T5s. Well? Yep, Gen 4s. I love Gen 4s, by the way. I love 5, I love 6, but Gen 4 is something. I still got a special love in my heart for them. Yeah, I do a good job. And you got T5s as well, but you, that said you don't have reef rights, so you do No, well. No reef rights on this one. Okay. How about water changes on this tank? Same as the one before? Uh, same as that. Being an LPS tank, I'm finding myself doing a little bit more to try and bring my phosphates down, trying to find that, that happy medium. So I'm playing with trying to get my chato working in the right way, my skimmer and everything else just to kind of even it out. So just the, the water changes right now a little bit more often than what I'm used to just to get it rolling. Okay, cool. And what about the line, the, the schedule for your lining? What, what time they come on, what time they go off? So actually, I have them come on at a really low blue at probably like six, seven in the morning because I'm okay. up early. Um, I don't actually hit my regular schedule from about till 10. Peaks at one, uh, peak drops off at seven, and then it's on until about midnight. Okay. So, but I still- You like to enjoy your tank. I like to enjoy my tank. This guy can tank. live without his tank. <laughs> All right, so we made it to the garage slash main cave. Yes, sir. Wow. <laughs> Talk about a lot of SPS. This is your passion. It shows. It is. It is. So real quick, I was just chatting with you. For those of you guys who don't know, you told me you started a website. You're selling some frags. Yep. What's the name? Is it your t-shirt? Putang Reefs. Putang the Reefs right there. <laughs> so support the man. He's got beautiful corals. 
What size is this? So this is a 350 gallon, so 96 by 36 by 24. Okay. Um, I actually, a, a gen an older gentleman in a, a couple cities over, he was uh, moving out of his house, moving into a retirement home and saw a listing go up and said, first person to come get it, gets it. I'm so, telling you, he's got the hookup. He knows how to find the big tanks. So, yep, brought this over, and I actually sat out in my driveway for like six months, and the city got real mad at me because I was trying to reseal it and just didn't have the help to move it in here, and finally was able to get around to it and got it in here. Oh, wow. Yeah. So how often you work here on these tanks? Every day, I'm assuming? Every day, man, every day. You have a little time schedule you try to? You follow a routine, day, or you're day. just going at it? All day, every day. Just, you're just a man, man, yep. my scientist. <laughs> How about Flo? You got two Jabals, three? Yep, uh, so I got the uh, I got two Jabals up there, the uh, the 180s, I got another Jabal in the corner for the direct flow, and then I got two of your uh, two of your Neptunes over here. Okay, how do you like the Neptune power heads? I do, I like them. Never never play with them myself. Yeah, they have, they have a bunch of the same thing, customizable, you know, yeah. uh, you know, schedules and everything like that, so. Plenty of flow. Yep. I see some beautiful Zoanthus here. Do you ever notice when you first put them in, they don't like the bright light? You almost have to get them adapt to that. Bit, they kind of close up, but once they, they take off, they seem to like the yep, bright light. Everything in that corner, because it's getting blasted by that radion over there. So when I, when I fragged them out and put them over there, they weren't happy, but they settled in nice. Almost like they grow too fast, right? A little bit, yeah. Everything that overgrows on my racks. So basically, I'm having to, I'm having to pull them off of my racks, and then eventually, I'll take the racks, clip it's them up. It's a pain, because like, oh, the rack is kind of like, <laughs> yep. it's weak. It's not like a new egg crate. Right, right. So like when you break it, it doesn't really break is like you got to fight and then you're yep. smooshing the it. yep if you if you're a fragger you know what i'm talking about <laughs> it's a pain so lights for this tank i yep. see you have a couple aqua illuminations here yep so i got uh, i got my t5 so eight bulb t5 up there i got the radions up there i'm gonna eventually i'm gonna work on getting those aqua illuminations moved over to uh your uh your radions as well i see um, but that way it's just I can grow SPS wall to wall, every corner is lit and not have any issues. Got you. And the sump is an old 75 you transform? Yep. yep. Do you do them yourself? Yep. Cool. How often do you do your water test? Uh, every day. So I run it, I run Trident. So I'm, I'm, I'm in okay. it at least four so times So you're checking your alkalinity basically yep. every day? And then I spot, I spot check with Salford every time, uh, maybe okay. a couple times throughout the Too week. Too much sure it's matching, it's just... Right, it doesn't drift It's not giving like you like that. a weird reading or anything right, right. like that. All right, so this is tank number four right here. So it's a little 80 gallon frag tank, is that what it is? Yep. Okay, uh, and this is by, made by, this is the old school, Lou, who used to make this tank? Uh, Deep Blue. Deep Blue. They're no longer in business, but we used to love them. Great tanks, very affordable. Yep. Easy to move around. I don't know what happened to them, shame, they went away. So what do you do? All, basically all your frags here that are ready to go yep. out and stuff like yep. that? All my frags are going here, uh, mini colonies that I'm kind of growing out in overflow space. So yeah, and then a couple, you know, just places that I don't have any extra room for. Okay. And then you say this system four is tank number four and tank number five. Correct. They're connected to, to some system number three. Yes. Okay, and for lights, what are you using here? Um, two, uh, two Radeon Gen 4s and then your T5s as well. So four, okay. four blue plus bulbs. So on. basically it's all Radeon and just a few aqua illuminations and obviously everything has got an accent of T5s. And on the first time, I think we saw a couple of reef lights. Yep. Okay, and for flow, what do we have here? Uh, two Jabals again. Okay. Tons of flow, they work great for you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that way good. it pushes, pushes enough flow across so the tank. I can time them on and off and Jabal was making a big push four or five years ago, and yeah. they seemed like they went quiet, and you don't see them around anymore. Right, right. Yeah. Great, the great power heads for the value, they were moving a lot of yeah. flow. I think that was just to kind of figure out. I've used them for the years just because I didn't know what flow I was really going to need, and before I started throwing money into nicer pumps and everything, so now they get an idea of what works. Now I can slowly start upgrading the equipment. You got you. And do you have any fish in here? Uh, I got one, uh, one Mimic. Chilling on the bottom down here. One what? A mimic tang. Okay, I see him. Yep, so he hangs out underneath and hides, and then I got a little blue damsel, and I think cool. he kills everything else that I put in here. So six lines, anything else, go bye-bye. So is it, is it safe to say that tank number four is two for all your frag SPS, and five is for all others? All the LPS over there. All the LPS, yep. couple of uh, Zoantes, I see some Blastos. Yep. Okay, cool. So that's number four, and let's come to number five real quick. Yes, sir. I see you got a lot of mushrooms. You got your zoanthus growing on the egg crate. You got some fabias here. This hammer grows like crazy, doesn't it? I love it? man. I love it. It grows and grows and grows and grows. Do. And it doesn't, it doesn't get finicky. It's just easy to just yeah. let it do its thing. It look nice. I love them. 
So I noticed you like to run a lot of white lights. Is there a time of the day that you run blue lights in general? Uh, I run blues basically every other time besides just the seven peak hours. Okay, got you. And for lighting here, we have two more Gen 4s? Yep, two Gen 4s. And this is the only one that you don't have additional accent to it? Correct. Okay. And one Jabal? Just one Jabal. Well, yeah, one Jabal. Why is it shooting towards the top? Just, uh, I got, I don't have a smaller one, so I'm trying to turn the flow down and okay. get it to where it's not blasting. So you're being creative. I'm trying to, yeah. I like it. I like it. You always, so, you know, it's cool that you do that because you're, you're, you're reading into the coral's needs and you're not saying, oh, what I have, they're going to be okay. No, you know, if you blast that thing moving forward, right. these things are not going to open like they need to be. And Absolutely. So that's, that's very right. nice, man. Too little flow cool. in there without it. And for this system, this is the protein skimmer? Yep. What is this, a reef octopus? Uh, uh, 250 or 250? 250 external, yep. okay. With a self-cleaning head? Correct. Cool, that's the waste over there? Yep, and then CO2 scrubber there as well. Okay, you have MPH even though being in the garage here? Yeah, yeah, I, I find that, I mean, I'm still hitting eight four every single day, so. Okay, I see, same sound like we talked about. Yep. So, Terrell? Thank you for inviting us I over, man. Your it, tanks man. look Thank amazing. You Thank you for coming. I'm super impressed. I can't believe you have five tanks in here. <laughs> uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you guys enjoy all these crazy tanks and this man, man right here. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Give us a like. Put some comment below. We'll see you guys soon.